Hi, I'm Dr. Alexander Ngenzi from University of Rwanda College of Science and Technology, a Department of Computer and Software Engineering. He doesn't understand the analog signal, which may be, for example, the normal texting, for example, A, B, for example, if I write my, my name, for example, as Alex, for example, the computer cannot understand. So what it does, it converts this signal then you know, put it into uh, digital numbers and then the processor is going to act upon on this and then translate it for example if the a was for example if a was these numbers for example so like this when it is hex according for example then it has to an analyze this one and then it goes to the system and the, 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 then in the end the system is going to display, obviously, A. So, inside the computer, there's nothing like A. But at the display side, it's going to be, um, it's going to be A, for example, displaying the whole. So that, that, that work is being done by the processor. At the processing side, we have a processor that is going to, uh, it's going to process the information uh, before it can get displayed. So these are the keywords that we use in digital uh, signal processing, uh, which include signals. So we include signals, systems, and processing. Now the next, the next, uh, the next uh, paragraph here we are going to talk about what what are the types of signals. So we begin with types of signals here, and. Uh, yeah, so we, we are going to, to look at the types of signals and we discuss them one by one so that we can get to know what they mean and why are they needed for uh, this particular course. So uh, remember, I, I have a little bit talked about or the, the, the electrical signal, which for example may be alternating current, for example, AC, the normal power that we use when connecting to our device. Uh, the alternating current or the, the voltage itself, voltages or currents uh, or within the circuit itself, electronic circuit. All these are called electrical signals. So this, these are the types, types of signals. So number one is this one. Example is S alternating current, the current that we use, the current voltage. And, uh, and so on. Uh, uh, you remember the current can be measured in two amps, amperes. So uh, those are the uh, one of the uh, signals. So, for example, here it, if it is an alternating current, it's, 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 it is it is wandering signal. Like as I said, for example, it goes like this. Also, it is I mean, still in analog signal, whereby we have to determine. It's, it's levels, for example, every level has to be defined with respect to time, of course, with respect to time. For example, if there's an amplitude here, then the signal is the, the, the amplitude versus the time, then you can determine the size here, then to the amplitude, and then you get to understand uh, what uh, the signal is. So this is number one. Number two, we have also a signal or the acoustic signal, or the signal that is being uh, 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 that is being taken into the acoustic pressure or in the, in the sea when 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 uh, when you uh, just trying to see, to watch the uh, to listen to the sound with respect to time. So it is called acoustic signals. 
signals with pressure, sound pressure, for example, sound pressure. Sound pressure. So you have been seeing some waves in, uh, over the sea or the, the, the voice sound was over the time and these are the acoustic, uh, for example, uh, uh, the, the, the sound of the pressure can be one of the acoustic uh, side. We also have mechanical signals and this, these are very common uh, to us. For example, when you're driving a car, you remember you have to put the acceleration or velocity of the forces of pressures. All those are the mechanical signals, and these are very common to us. Everyone can understand them. So, uh, or we can have also another one, number three, you can have a mechanical signal. mechanical signals uh, which are which may be velocity acceleration or force force forces pressure pressure and so on and so forth so number one electrical signal alternating current or a current itself that is a constant voltage and so on and so forth we have also a characteristic which may be sound or pressure, and this one is the mechanical side. We can also have the video signals, for example. Uh, here we, we, we can have also the uh, video signals, number four, uh, video signals. Uh, for example, using the camera, uh, the camera is going to uh, camera is going to generate videos. Then, then we uh, can have pictures, uh, pictures, videos. All these pictures can be taken by the cameras, so that the intensity level of the pixels. Suppose if you have a picture then you can just make it into a video or the picture wise so that you can have such a information. These are the, the, type of, the types of signals. And how do we classify them? The, the, now we are going to talk about the signal classifications. So we classify, classify them according to, we are going to classify them according to, uh, uh, these were the types, now we are going to, Remember, we are, I also talked about the wandering signal or the analog signal and the discrete signal from the beginning. But here also we are going to go in, 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 in deep and discuss the signals. So here we have signal, signals. Signals can be divided into continuous, continuous signal and the discrete time discrete time, continuous time here, time. But here also can be divided into some other, uh, not like this, but also it can undergo uh, values. For example, you get uh, continuous values. Those are the numbers and also getting analog which are, which are presented in graphical form, analog. So there, here, here also can be divided into some other forms, for example, continuous value, but, and also a discrete value, discrete value, but also here we can have uh, the, the discrete form and here also the, the discrete form. So in the end, on this side, we are going to get into pure numbers. For example, from the beginning can have a continuous and a discrete values, but, but the, the, the focus or the target is to get the, 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 the digital forms. So here we are going to get 
this, this is the discrete value, but here we get the pure digital form. So this is, if I say, for example, if I ask you, dear students, for example, if I ask you, for example, classify the signal, I explain the classification of the signals. Don't bring the other one of the electrical signal and so on. The other ones are the types, but here they are. They are the classification. How do we classify them? So here we may have various number of signals. There we can have also various number of signals and etc. Uh, and etc. Et so here we can have so many other uh, branches that are branching from each, each one of these ones. So those are the classifications of signals. And how do they, how can you present them or how can you display them? So each one of these, be it a continuous signal or the continuous time varying signal or a discrete time varying uh, discrete time signal, we can present them. Okay, uh, as we continue uh, on the and how we can present our signals here. First of all, remember on the classifications we talked about the continuous continuous time or signals. For example, here we are going to begin with continuous signal with amplitude with amplitude. Remember the amplitude is, uh, it, it looks like a size. I mean the amplitude, how at which level, at which certain level are you going to measure your signal? For example, suppose if you have a graph like this, uh, just call it for example, and, uh, of course this with time here, then you put amplitude here, amp here, then you begin measuring, for example. So you can have, for example, this is T, and the other one is amplitude. Here we are going to see how we can measure the, the signal, for example. So you can have, for example, a signal moving in this way, for example, uh, to this, to this level. Then it goes, it changes, for example, in this way. Then it goes like this. So you can me measure the, the basement of each signal here, uh, and then uh, based on the, the, the continuous signal with amplitude, this is what we are talking about. So uh, 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 taking into consideration, for example, here, okay, sorry, uh, this, is, this line represents with time, uh, uh, I mean, here. So, it can vary according to the time. Going to the other side, for example, if you from one from one negative one, for example, this side. This is what we call continuous signal with amplitude. Uh, with amplitude. But also we can have also this is the other one. We can also have a continuous signal with, for example, with discrete amplitude. So. Here, for example, number two, we can have con continuous time signal with discrete, discrete time. For example, here we are going to measure, for example, the amplitude at the certain level, uh, having, for example, uh, you can have, for example, uh, values. Uh, in this form. So you can give, for example, the, the distance value that looks like this, and then like this, and like this, but also being measured to any value here. And here, for example, you can measure it, for example, using the time signal, uh, time signal here. So the amplitude is here. So that is a continuous time. Uh, uh, using the, with the, the with discrete uh, time. So, for example, here it can be one, it can be zero, it can be. So those are the discrete values that we can measure. So it is a continuous time with discrete amplitude. So it will be given here, for example, the a t. So that is amplitude with time. 
uh, measured as a signal. And also, we can also use, so I, I'm going to erase this one and then it just continue with the next type of our information. So I have erased and then I go to the, the third point here. We can also discuss about discrete with. So before it was continuous time uh, with discrete amplitude. But the other one is vice versa. So we are going to have, for example, a value in this way and having our basement, for example, with time. Then you can have measured signal, for example, here, and then there, and then like this, being uh, measured to a certain level at this side. So uh, you can have signal, suppose if it is like this, then it goes like this. So we want to remove all these uh, distortions and then we remain with discrete. So it's going to be discrete with a continuous signal. So at a certain point it continues, so it begins like for example like this, then it goes like this, then it, it has to move like this and then like this. So in the other one. So it is discrete fast. This discrete oh, sorry, discrete fast then with a certain amplitude, the certain size at this at this level, for example, the arm, the amplitude at this side. So it goes discrete uh, continuous signal with uh, discrete with uh, time signal with continuous amplitude. Continuous arm amplitude. So this is another presentation of the signal. Uh, but also we can have a pure, those, so to remove these sides, these sides that are there, uh, remember, remember, we can, we can, we can have, we can, we can get the, the complete uh, size. For example, here we, we can have, uh, so, and here it becomes closer to these values. Uh, so, So these values, for example, then uh, yeah. So the numbers here, for example, has some uh, compact range, different from. So these are purely discrete, discrete. So here we, we don't even require. We are requiring some numbers, for example, unit, unit amplitude here, for example, and here, but it is not a continuous or a wandering signal. So uh, the, the, these are these are called. Discrete, discrete time with discrete, discrete uh, amplitude. So this is one of our signal of our signals there. So these are also uh, can be presented in, in this way. So this is we have seen how signal can be presented. Remember, we discussed about the, the, the signals, types of signals. We also discussed about the, the, I mean, the classification of signals. And here we have been discussing about the, how signal can be presented here. But also we are going to see why, if somebody asks you, what's the use of a signal processing? Why do we need to process a signal? Why, why is it required? Is it necessary? If we don't process, what will happen? So we are going to look into that. And here we are going to raise a question uh, where we are going to understand why do we need signal processing? Why do we do these things? So this, this is also very important. Why? The question here. Why do we need signal Processing. So this is a question that we are going to discuss here. First of all, why signal? Because here you can see there are two words that are used in here. Before we discuss 
uh, in, in, in two details what is a digital and here we are going to discuss the, the signal in details and why is it necessary that we, we need the signal processing so first of all why, why signal the reason why we need the signal here we are, we are we, we, as I say you want to convey information so for example if I, 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 I I'm delivering a, a speech here if it is recorded somewhere then that information can be stored in a safe manner, for example, using some other devices, for example. So if I say, this is a voice signal, it is recorded somewhere, and it has conveyed some message or some information. Remember, the, the information is going to be um, um, in the binary numbers if we, need, if we really need uh, digital uh, signal processing. And also it can also remain as it is when it remains into a voice signal. So in that case, it's going to be analog. But that's not what we need. We need a signal which is purely digital and which has been converted. So that's the, the, the real the, the need of a signal processing. So first of all, we are understanding what is a signal. A signal is there to convey information. In every signal we have information, be it analog signal, be it signal, uh, I mean digital signal. But, so that is number one. We, we see why signal, we have said it is very important to note that a signal conveys information. And why processing? We are processing it in, so that we can put it in a form whereby it can be uh, transformed or be transferred in a, a desired form. So we want here, when processing, we want it to be in a desired, in a desired form. Not, not just sending information anyhow in a zigzag manner or people cannot understand when interpreting or being presented. So the signal can, can be uh, transformed in the way that it should be and the way that is comfortable for everyone to understand what it means. So uh, here we are transforming this signal into a desired form so that everyone can get to know, ah, that, that was in this way. So remember, when we are studying, dear students, when we are studying these, these courses, we want to put these courses into our uh, normal lives. Uh, the way how we, we, we use them outside there, outside the classrooms. We want, we want to let people, uh, even those who have never gone for these courses or who have never gone to school, if we, even you are explaining to, to your parents, to understand what you are doing. It is an obvious that uh, uh, it's not quite normal that uh, if uh, your parents can ask you what are you studying, then you fail even to, uh, to, to explain to them. So, why do we need to by questioning ourselves why signal? Uh, the answer is to convey information, and why processing is to put the information in the desired form. So. When you bring them together, you, it's uh, the way, the easiest way of conveying information into a desired form. That is purely the answer that you can get here. So, and the reasons are more than one. For example, why do we uh, process the information? The reason, uh, another question is that, why processing now the equation? Another question too. Why processing? Why signal process? Why why are we processing? So we are processing or manipulating the signal to get uh, rid of some disturbances. No, I mean does the disturbances including the noise in the signal. For example, uh, noise. When I'm speaking here, I may be having some echo sounds that are bouncing. So that if, if, you, if for example, you record the, 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 the my voice, and when it has no, never passed the cameras, as you can see, the cameras, the, the other devices that can 
decode our signal and just, just make it them pure, then you will hear some noise. If, for example, if you interpret it as the way it is, when taking outside there, it will, uh, they will disturb some people and uh, they will hear some many voices, I mean, for many signals. And therefore, we, 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 we hear some noises. So when processing this one, you are making sure that you are going to, to remove all those interfer interferences or the noise which may hinder uh, understanding. Remember when, it, when the communication or information is delivered, you want to get it the way it is. And suppose if you, you have gotten it in a in the, in the different way, having some echo sound, so this is not a desired signal that you are intended to get. And this time you are going to, uh, to, to put it, uh, to, to, to process it so that you can reduce, you can reduce, re re reduce this noise and also uh, by putting it into a spectrum or just removing some frequencies for example you remember when you are listening to radio there is uh, the, the, the amplitude moderation frequencies am frequency moderation signals so here in rwanda for example normally we use frequency moderation so that you cannot hear all those cross talks so the, the tuning is like processing if you are tuning your radio putting to the, the, the real station you are like processing your information so that the voice can be, uh, be, a Disney, uh, be put into a desired form. So the suitable information that we need is the reason why we are processing information here. So, yeah, so, um, uh, so here there are so many variables or signals that we can see, as I, I said, we have voltage, we have, uh, we have uh, acceleration, you have all those mechanical signals, light intensity, all those ones. Uh -huh. So we are coming to the very important uh, uh, point that we are going to discuss now. Uh, we said from the beginning that you, we, we, we are talking about, about uh, we are talking about the digital uh, signal processing. But remember, before it has come to be a digital, it has to be analog. So here we are going to explain the differences that these types can, can, can cause and to understand them and to, to see the, the where, where, uh, how to generate analog signals and digital signals so that we can uh, draw all those differences. So here we have what we call the, the signal processing itself. Signal processing. And it, which is of two types. Number one is analog signal. And, and also digital signals. Digital. And here we are going to de de define a little bit and uh, just being quick so that because we have already uh, explained uh, about them. So here we are going to to talk about what is analog signal. As we have seen, the analog having a waveform like this, for example, if it is a sine wave, if it is a sine wave, oh, okay, ampli okay, sine wave, for example, presented here, okay, a sine, a beauty in this form. So why, for example, or any signal, why of t is going to be S sin WT, where there is omega with time. So it's going to be, to, to be explained using use this with time, for example, and magnitude. So uh, it's called an analog signal, a wandering signal, or a waveform signal that forms a continuous time varying or takes a continuous range of amplitude, continuous range at a certain amplitude there and varies in the a, in a form of waveform. So it is called what we call uh, analog signals. It is a continuous signal that with respect to time. And also the, we have also digital uh, signal as we, we described from the beginning composed of 
discrete time signal discrete time signal it is not continuous waveform here we remember we are not we, it is not wandering in this way instead it's going to have some uh, limit, limited level for example going in this way going in this way going in this way so they, they are in digital they, they are digitized in this form but before being this it has to be discrete in two numbers for example as i say so the, the discrete time numbers so at the end when you divide them like this it becomes like this way so those are the, the, the signals that you are going to process. OK.